not sure if you can see this, but I have a serious problem. I have an agonizing back pain for the last couple days. Um, this has been getting worse and worse for two weeks actually, but the last two days I haven't been able to move. I can barely get out of bed, I can barely do anything. The mattress has sunken right here. Completely sunken. This is where I, the, most of my weight stays. I lay on the side there on the side of the mattress and it's collapsed fully. There you can see it I think. It's completely collapsed and compressed. Now this is uh, nighttime, so it's been sitting here all day and it never came back up. And it's just getting worse and my back is killing me. I have pain shooting down my leg, up my back. I can't move, I can't walk or anything. And I think this is why. So, I had to go to Walmart today. Well this is my solution. I got myself an air mattress. Uh, it's not as good as a real mattress, but this is my budget solution, and this is what I'll be using for the next three to six months, I guess. That's about how long these last on average. I've slept on air mattresses most of my life, so it's good. I've got a package here from Frost King. Just arrived in the mail. Check out what's in here. I know Frost King is a big brand. Actually, I just saw him the other day in uh, Home Depot. And I think the latest True Value Hardware ad had Frost King. So they sent me a package here to help out with my RV. Uh, what do we have here? Pipe wrap insulation kit. Okay, it's a wrap on. Oh, there's some plastic here. Fiberglass and plastic pipe insulation. Oh, it's a wrap on. Okay, nice. Uh, what do we have here? A couple uh, packages of rubber foam weather seal. That's going to be very useful for the, uh, the doorways and some of my hatches. That's going to be helpful. And we have here some more pipe wrap. Very good stuff. Help me keep my pipes from freezing in here. Water pipe heat cable. Now this is interesting because I realize I didn't know how much power this stuff used, but I think I can use this on solar. I've been saying no, 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 but after talking to the guys at Frost King, I think I can use this on solar power. They said it's only, I think he said, 7 watts per foot length, which isn't that much power at all. So, this is curious. I, I This might save me out here in the forest this winter. I'm definitely trying this out. Oh, just in time. It's 40 degrees here every morning. And the baby is looking for the box. Window insulation kits. Oh, a three pack. Very good. Very good. So let me see. We got a few of these window insulation kits. I'll be putting these up this week. And that's going to be so much better to not be freezing in the mornings. And all night, I should say. Here's for large windows. There's another large window kit. Uh, what do we have here? We have some more pipe wrap insulation. This is a different type. This looks like recycled fiber type insulation. And here's some of the same thing. Pipe wrap insulation, the fiber type. Vinyl foam weather seal. Okay, this is a little bit thinner. Self-stick weather sealing. Let me see. There's another the same. And here we have rubber foam weather seal. Alright. I'm going to seal this RV up. Won't have any more drafts when I'm done with this. Well, thank you, Frost King.
be installing this this week here. No more freezing cold nights in the old RV. Oh, this is perfect timing. Thank you, guys. I've got a very long box from Frost King. It will not fit into the screen or into the uh, display of the camera. So let me get this open and see what we have here. This is a very long, it's not very heavy, it's a very long, lightweight box. See what we have here. Oh, this is the real deal here. All right. Pipe insulation. Frost King pipe insulation. Let's see if I can get that in the video. 3 8 inch thick polypropylene foam for half inch pipes. Well, now I'll be able to seal my uh, my windows. Make sure my pipes don't freeze. Well, thank you very much, Frost King. Well, now I can barely walk in here, but good news, I slept well last night. Well, actually, let me reword that. I don't have a backache this morning. I um, slept comfortably. I never sleep really well. I got some weird problem with my sleep, but anyway, I was comfortable last night. And my new air mattress, although it's huge, it sticks out way into the room. It, um, you can see here, it, it's larger than the frame. But it gives me all that much room, more room to flop around on at night. And poor cat, she has to ride it like a surfboard. Because I flop and kick a lot at night. But this looks nice. It actually looks like a real bed now. So, my back is better. And that was exactly what caused the problem. This was it. And uh, as long as I can keep the cat from popping my air mattress, I'll be good. And what I've done here... By the way, a lot of people are sometimes worried about my comfort. I don't have any heat in here at night, but I've got a uh, three nice blankets here. This, I don't remember where that came from. This is from Mexico. And I've had this for had this since 1994 it still looks like the day it was made Mex Mexicans know how to make your stuff this is my old military blanket I've had that just as long and it's also perfect and this one is underneath now I, I use these for warmth at night and that's all I need 40 degrees at night and I've got these three blankets and that's all I need and I'm comfy this is toasty warm at 40 degrees below that and I'll have to throw on another blanket this is my other blanket from Mexico. I bought that down there, handmade in Mexico. And uh, at least that was the claim on it. But anyway, it was cheap. When I paid for it, it was not very much. And uh, I loved going down in Mexico. When I was in Fort Hood, Texas, we'd go down there off track for a bit. But you'd go to one stand and you'd see a price on a blanket. and it's, I don't even remember what I paid. It wasn't much, but say five dollars or start ten dollars. The guy next to him, you'd tell him, "Well, this guy's got it for ten. Uh, can you give it to me for nine? And he'll say yes. Yeah. So you go to the other guy and say, "Hey, this guy says nine, and you go back and forth until you get the price you want. But this lays on on the bottom now. Hopefully, it's some um, cat proofing because she has all of her claws. So um, I'm hoping that this will protect the mattress. Eventually, I want to get one of those thick pads that go down here, underneath the sheet cover. So there's my bed. It's comfortable, and my back is healed. I am so happy because honestly, b due to that collapsed, well, this this piece of garbage, sadly, um, having collapsed in the middle, my back was in agony yesterday, and it took me 30 minutes to stand up. Well, anybody over 40, you know what I'm saying. Uh, well, I'm standing right here. I want to show you. A lot of people are wondering and, and giving comments about the woodshed and the windows. And here is the plan. 
Here's an open window, free and clear. I have visibility. See, I can look. I can look outside now. This is going to be closed off right here. That's a solid wall. This line right here. That's a solid wall. But I'll still have anything in this view range. I can look around outside. Now, when I want heat from the woodshed, from this stove shed here, I just open this window, and I'm going to have a fan hanging right here. I have a 10-inch. Uh, DC fan. I'm going to run power out through under this bed is the water tank and where the hot water heater was. And I'm going to run a 12 volt outlet out into that um, box that I emptied out just for this purpose. With all my connections, I'm going to have outdoor electricity. I might even put an AC outlet in the work shed here because, uh, near the uh, stove shed, because I don't have any AC power outside. So everything's going to run through here. And again, open the window, turn on the fan. I've got heat from the wood stove directly. Meanwhile, the water from the boiler part of the stove is pumped straight in under the bed. And let me explain here and show you. I'm going to lift up the skirts of the bed here. I should have my head and lamp on. I don't know what the visibility is like. Right here... Is a heater blower. There's the power. I think I blew a fuse. Oh, there's a fan. Yeah, I have to. I have to fix the fuse. That's the fuse I blew when I messed up my cigarette lighter. Well, anyway, I keep saying I'm not perfect, right? Um. There's a there's a uh, heater core in here and a big blower motor, just like in your car heater inside your car. And when the RV engine is running. You would flip on the power here, which would, you got the fan control, fan speed control, and this would blow air from the engine of the vehicle. So you have heat up front and heat in the back. I'm going to simply hook into here from my wood stove. So the boiler is going to be connected to this heater here, which is already in place. And I'm thinking about setting up a big tank of water here inside the shed above the stove and I'm going to experiment. I want an unpressurized system. So there will be a large tank of water here to be heated by the stove and then hopefully I'll have a thermal siphon effect. The hot side is going to go up into the tank and the, the hot water will go up, hot water from the stove on the top of the stove will go up into the top of the tank then from the bottom of the tank a line will come out and this is my theory through my heater blower and then out back to the bottom of the stove that's the theory if you guys uh, think that's gonna fail on me please let me know because it is just a theory I'm thinking that it should work because the stove is going to heat the water and push it out and it should just circul circulate through that bucket. So I'll try that first just with the uh, stove in line and see how that works out.